My friends, hello, welcome aboard another island. It's weird to think that all of these islands are just dotted amongst the Animal Crossing sea. Like, I want to start getting sea villagers, or at least more of them. I know we have octopi and things of that sort, but we really need, like, sea turtle villagers. And some fish, too, because this game, like, everybody's just out in the ocean. It doesn't really seem that way until you step back and say, wow, I visited 50 islands, and they're all scattered across the great big blue. But welcome to Fordana. A beautiful place that has much more than just blue. This is Ronnie's Island, crafted carefully and elegantly. It is a majestic five-star and actually has such an interesting origin because Ronnie was writing a story about this mystical land of Fordana and created a place that really embodies the place she envisioned in her head. I thought that was just so cool. Like, the creativity that came forth from that story is now here in this island. So we're going to check it out together. It's a really fun ride. And... Fordana is here. Thank you for the welcome, Ronnie. We got some sweet gear, so I'll have to throw her uh, creator code up on the screen. Gonna take a peek at this first. I love this Pokemon uh, lineup here. We got all of the Eevees and the starters, the OG starters. I'm gonna grab my Charmander hoodie and some of these pastel hats. I think they're pretty freaking nice. Yes, I agree. They are they are lovely. I give you a round of applause. If you guys enjoy the video, definitely smash that like button if you're having fun with AC and these video uploads that we put on the channel here and definitely let ronnie know in the comments down below if you like this island i think it's very impressive so show her some love a lot of greatness going on here one of the best bits is this print that she made this path of little critter feet i think it's so cool that all throughout the island you've got the paw prints of some of her villagers lurking all around hanging out on the beach walking through the towns and one of the things that ronnie really focused on was that each villager had a very distinct and different house and yard to embody their character and what they'd be interested in. I'm going to show you the map of this one right off the bat before we get any deeper. Now you can see there is a lot of land space, but it's used very, very well. The museum, that big area in the back, it's a great, great spot. I can't wait to show you, but we've got Ronnie, we've got Tangy, we've got Sky and Bones, Muffy and Sherb, Avery and Kabuki, Renee and I'm hiding... <laughs> Raven. Everybody loves Raven. No, I still don't really understand why, but, you know, it is it is a, a way of the world. A beautiful beach here. Um, Ronnie actually has done something amazing with the beach on Fordana, so I'm going to show it to you. This is kind of an interesting island tour. I feel like it is much more of a... You know, I've seen a lot of nature-based islands, but I would say this one's natural in the fact that it's laid out. It feels very organic. Maybe that's a better word. We've got a little spot here to right by the sea, stare off in the distance... Sip on some OJ and munch on some Sammies and uh, hang out having a good time creating the story of the land that we're about to explore. Okay, I'm going to take you to the other beach real fast before we start investigating the villager islands because Ronnie has done something that I have not seen in any other island. And, and maybe you have, but I have never seen this. This is one of a kind for me. There's also so many flowers. It's so tempting to want to run in them. My feet are twitching at the moment. But I promise I will. I will be respectful and uh not mess it up but check this out all right so there's more picnic areas on the beach over here places to lay out and it's color coordinated to match with the able sisters i have never seen someone put a shop on the beach maybe you have but in all my tours i have yet to see someone do something with this concept i think that's so creative and so cool i love it all right so i'm gonna take you guys to some of the villager houses because i think they're really really fun what's up kicks we got a nice little uh, Fordana flag flying high. And as you can see, uh, the different villagers have their faces and their spaces. So we've got a garden, a cafe. Um, some of them are just so fancy. We've got a nice campsite over here. But as we navigate deeper into Fordana, you'll find Nook's Cranny chilling over yonder. And then you'll find the House of Ronnie, which we will take a look at. So many hybrid flowers, except Mums, because she says she hates those. But I love this lead-up to the house. It's such a big entryway. It almost feels like a gated community or a driveway where you can park, like, seven cars. I have a lot of kids, like, skateboarding and playing basketball and whatnot. A little park area here with benches, a workout facility. Everybody's so into fitness. I don't know if it's the quarantine. I mean, Ronnie says she spent over 500 hours putting this together, which is bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. But it shows, man. And I wonder without the quarantine if we wouldn't have as many, um, you know, workout areas as we do. Because everybody's got an outdoor gym. And I feel like the focus on fitness is uh, at an all-time high. But you can see even the villagers are prancing around getting their swole on, building those muscles. I love how this dude over here 
has like a man-made garden, right? It's very stone and rock themed. And then over here, it's a very natural garden with a custom path and very dainty music and all the plants and the trees and even all natural tables made out of wood with some orange slices uh, for, for your soccer team out there. Yeah, this is one of my favorites as well. I definitely agree with you there. Um, we've got this marvelous jungle gym. This whole play area for kids that I think is so cool. It's like a park, basically, with so many train tables and sand pits and all sorts of toys and tires, all the different colors of elephant slides. Really a big blown out area for the young sprites of this island. I wonder if the villagers eventually have children. If they live here long enough, you know, do they do they have kids? Do they hang out with the, the children eventually? The dog Bones has a, a dog house because he's a dog and the bone sign on the door and it's it's you know made up to be a dog house, which is pretty freaking neat and fancy. And we got resident services over here, and we'll head to Sherb's house on this side. He's got his own uh, little food themed area because he's always hungry. And so we got pizza, we got popcorn, gumballs, and fruits, ice cream lamps too. It's all so nicely laid out, so so thought uh, so thoughtfully put together, which I really appreciate, because these are the kind of things that make islands feel so different. Kabuki has this beautiful lead-up. I've never seen a villager get this much space on an island, but Kabuki is, he's aware that he's got his own little Japanese Zen garden here. And what's interesting about Fordana is that because each villager's space is designed to be a location, like a forest or a Zen garden, it's allowed for so many different types of areas to take shape in this place without taking up too much room. So there's a lot of variety, a lot of flexibility, a lot of fun. I love this one so much. I don't remember the name of this horse. It's um, it's Renee's house. She's got this little like art gallery here where she's painting pictures of butterflies and has some for inspiration. Just so, so nice. This one just really like makes me smile. A nice little fountain area over yonder and a do not run through the flowers sign. I think it was specifically designed for people like me. I'm gonna take you to a really interesting spot on the island, which is the photo op spot. So you line up, and if you enjoy your time here, you can go sign up for a photo. So check this out. I actually went the uh, the wrong way first. We're gonna head over here. You can stand next to the Leaning Tower, the Statue of Liberty, the freaking pyramid, and take your photo with the villagers that coordinate to the locations, which I think is pretty freaking fun. I love these little signs. Get your photo taken, and then uh, you head down this way to get up. And look at this attention to detail. Check this out. I'm gonna zoom in on the camera here for you. Whoops, that's the map. I'm gonna zoom in on the camera. Um, we've got on at the photo stall where you like print it off and everything. You can see it's actually a picture of her villager taking a photo between by the pyramid between Anka and Lucky which is so nifty and such great attention to detail. You can get your, your print out here, whether you get your lucky parent print or your Anka theme print or your, your pyramid picture, so nice. We got a little uh, surfboard viewing deck on the beach using all of this real estate. Not too cluttered, not too crowded, but oh, so nice. There's actually some stuff up here on the beach, including um, a special way for red to descend. We got some black and gold roses. We got a little uh, beach area over yonder little fishing spot, which I like, a scarecrow, and more black uh, roses, which is nice. And I actually think I took you guys the incorrect way. I'll have to find red spot. Now, I try to memorize these islands and see where the special stuff is. And sometimes I'm so like, wow, this is beautiful, that I get immersed in the moment and I kind of forget see. Um, is it back here? It's not back here. All right. Th this one is masterfully laid out. I feel like a lot of the islands we've seen recently have done a really nice job of pathing and purposefully, like, blocking off sections of the island. I talk about blocking as something that's really important to your island. It helps define um, the space and make it feel so much bigger. Before we hit the museum, which I think is one of the coolest entryways I've seen for a Blathers spot, this cafe is so fruitful. There's so much going on, and I love that it's not just, like, one table. But it's actually, look at this, this is so smart. So it's the same setup at each table, but it's rotated to increase variety and not make it seem like it's just a floop down pattern. See that? Really, really good. I like that a lot. A little cafe, which is pretty fun. Um, and here is a orchard. Okay, we'll get there in a second. I gotta show you guys the museum. But that orchard, that's what leads to red. I remember now. Not that old. All right, check out this museum spot. It's pretty cool. There's a little like study area for the kids to hang out, do their homework by the museum, which I think is so sweet. And these little exhibits to sit and talk and just admire the butterflies and some of the insects that are lurking, including this terrified scorpion. 
The statue of the scorpion is so big. Like, the tarantula statue is big, but I feel like the scorpion statue is massive. All right. Fossils to give you an idea of what's to come in the museum. And a brilliant, beautiful layout. Waterfalls behind. Plants and shrubs on the sides. Flowers above. And it's just so nicely built into this island. It gets a full roll around, as you can see. It's such a long entryway. It rolls right through and you can't even see it. I love that perspective shift. I've seen people messing with perspective a lot to create forced perspective uh, locations. Very, very cool. All right, so through the fruit cafe, fruit and coffee grown with love, we have an actual fruit orchard, which is pretty neat. And this is where the secret path to red lies. I believe you head this way. And down the little path, I love people that give red his own spot. Now, apparently these are fakes that she bought from red and she leaves them here as a reminder that she ain't happy with Mr. Jolly Red. Yeah, she's she's fed up. But she did give him a nice entryway, which I always approve and appreciate. It's something that I like to see on islands. I, I really like. All right, we got another little house here. Fruity and Tootie for tanging. A little cat tower because it's a, it's a cat. And then the house of Raymond is elegant and majestic. Apparently, someone was super kind and just gifted Raymond to Ronnie. And that, to me, is so special. I love that Animal Crossing has made people just compassionately help others out. In fact, some of this island, she said, was made uh, with the help of others to so acquire all the pieces for, like, the kids' playground and stuff. Another little cafe. Top side here to kind of look over the entire island. Uh, spot some stars, sip some tea, or maybe a hot cocoa with extra marshmallows. A wonderful spot. Now, I'm going to take you to her house because I think her house is also majestic. But this entire island is just really, really nice. Little stalls that have... Uh, some free DIYs for people to grab. And as you can see, every villager has a wonderfully customized and personalized place to live and thrive. And it's like that love and TLC that Ronnie gives their villagers that I think sets this island apart and makes it a very fun, happy spot, in my opinion. It's just everybody, like, everybody's pumped to live here. Nobody's irritated. Nobody's upset. We're going to walk to her house now, which, again, gets this wonderful treatment with the hybrids. I think it's so nice it's luscious even and we'll head inside knock knock even though no one's home we'll take a peek i wish i had tea but i just have water today Meh. um look at this in alice in wonderland being room because that is the favorite story of the island's owner and it's very elegant i love that it's not like crazy alice it's more like hmm regal alice so we'll take a peek at some of these other rooms including the room where all the magic happens with the creation of the codes for the custom gear. It's it's interesting to me that it's Pokemon themed because like nothing on the island is Pokemon themed and there's just like Pokemon uh, clothing, which is awesome. I mean, I'm taking some home. It's just like, I didn't see anything else Pokemon. So I was like, oh, not only do we have this elegant island, but also yes, Ash catch them, bring it home. Every Eevee ever. Very, very cool. And the eclectic taste of island creators is what makes us beautiful. And you don't have to just have it be one thing. I mean, this island is a jack of all trades while still retaining a general overarching theme. This is a bathroom. It's a unique bathroom. I haven't really seen a bathroom colored and, and, and done up in this way, so I like it a lot. A little clothing rack and what looks to be a steamer. Um, it is the upstairs and downstairs uh, that, like, this is the, this is still some of the best stuff in the island. I, I think her animal room upstairs is one of my top three places on the island, and that's really cool. So this is a cool room. It's not even one of my tops, but it's still so neat. It has the posters of all the villagers. So fun. Got Raymond and Tangy and Kabuki and the whole crew doing good work. Love it, right? Love the friendship and the posters and just the nice little room. And also Rover's briefcase, as you can see. Now everybody has that. I'm really impressed with myself, by the way. I haven't lost my voice during Animal Crossing yet. Knock on wood. I used to lose my voice all the time. If you watch my channel over the year. Whoops. Upstairs we go after that little oopsie daisy out the door but no i haven't lost my voice yet but look at this oh, so many bugs this either gets you creeped out or makes you jump for joy it's such a fun room i love all the fishies the little eel guy sharks and bugs and wallpaper all over it's just so wonderful the big moths the big butterflies the dragonfly so freaking cool. I love this room. Scorpion lamp. So nifty. So nifty indeed. What a fantastic showcase of some of the lively creatures in this game. I, I absolutely adore that room. And then the downstairs is sort of the, um, the, sh the sewing shop. The fashion floor is down beneath the house. 
and this is where all the designs come to fruition. You can see all the beautiful from Charmander to Squirtle the Bulbasaur all through the Eevee chain and all the hats. I love that hat right there. The Sylveon hat, quite nice. Quite nice indeed. All right, even the Umbreon hat, pretty cool. Who's your favorite Eevee? Mine's Espeon. I could take the dresses with me, but I think I'm going to take the long sleeves. Probably a, probably a better fit. But this island, I don't know the story of Fordana, but it feels like such a well-crafted, TLC-driven place. And I love all of the care and imagination that went into this island. I think it's remarkably well done. And it's just one that you can tell there was true passion and true enthusiasm and true heart that went into every corner of this place and, and especially for the villagers that reside here they get love too and i love to see that it makes me happy hopefully this tour made you guys happy and you enjoyed we are going to say ta-ta for now thanks again to ronnie for giving us the tour if you guys enjoyed hit that like button let her know in the comments down below what you thought of her five star masterpiece i thought it was utterly fantastic i love the playground i love the big museum and i love how each villager has a place to call home. I'm going to go home, which means shut this off for now. You guys take it easy. Have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for your support and for sticking with me. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you're staying safe and staying healthy out there. We have a Discord server. Link is always in the description. It's a fun, safe, great, wonderful place to make friends, trade villagers, talk, switch, and hang out with yours truly. So I hope to see you over there. Until next time, everybody, goodbye, Fordana. Goodbye to you. I love you a lot. Switch Force out.